We're gonna talk to some people, gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna talk to Hello? some people, gonna learn a lot of stuff. We're gonna talk to some Hello? people, gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna talk to some Hello? people, gonna learn a lot of stuff. Cause Kristen knows blank. Oh, hi everybody, and welcome back to the Kristen Knows Blank podcast. Uh, thank you for listening or, or watching or however you're taking in this podcast. It's good to see you. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think after the end of the episode or right now. You could just leave us a message. Anyway, hey, it's a new season of the Kristen Knows Blank podcast. So thank you for listening. Uh, we have some amazing guests coming up this season. I don't know how we're getting them. They're so good, but I'm so excited to bring them to you. Before that, um, let me just tell you real quick, go over to my website, kristinkey.com, if you want to see me live on the Lesbian Army Tour. I will stress, you do not have to be a lesbian to join the Lesbian Army. You could be anyone. We need everybody. We need our hetero reserves and our bisexual brigade and our gay men's choir to sing us merrily on uh in our trans special four we need everybody we need the, the old lesbians to just come and didn't complain so join join the lesbian army or just come see one of my shows the tour is all on my website you can see where i'm going if i'm not coming to your city well then then write me a strongly worded email and tell me all about it today my guest is unbelievable i had the pleasure of working with them at traverse city up north pride you may remember them from rupaul's drag race hey computer lady Play that interview with Nina West. Playing interview with Nina West. How are you? I'm wonderful. It's so good to see you again. It's nice to see you again. It's been too long. I since know. I've been I know. It feels like just yesterday. There's yeah. so much I want to talk to you about today. I try not to talk about work too much because I like to find out what you do when you're not Nina Westing. Uh, but I will say, first off, I met you at the Traverse City uh, Up North Pride and it was one of those, we met the night before this crazy steakhouse late night restaurant. Um, yes, that's right. Yeah. Which was super fun. The food is, I don't, I don't even know what to say about this place. It's just, it's, I mean. It, it, it seems iconic in its own right, right? I mean, it's, the food is, it's, it's there. And she, they're like, the waitress is just mean enough to you. Like our, Aaron, Aaron Foley was with me and she's like got dietary mm -hmm. restrictions. And so it was the funniest thing in the world to have the waitress be like, ah! Well, no, we, you, we you have, should eat we meat have, here. We only really have cheese and everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> It's all dairy all the time. So I met you. Uh, it's wonderful, but I hadn't seen you perform yet. And then the next night was the big drag show. And I've never been called to a stage with dollars in my hands screaming the way that I did during your performance. <laughs> Thanks. You know, I got to see your performance on the first night. My first night there was the, was the comedy show. Yeah. <laughs> You got to see the comedy show on the first night that I was there. And it was, um, you are like so incredible and so funny. And you had the audience <sighs> wrapped around your finger. I mean, this is just gonna be a podcast of us complimenting each we other. We just fangirl each other. Just, <laughs> no, I, here's what I loved about you. I liked it when you were yodeling and you were, you did Dolly and you wore jeans. Just all of my favorite things. <laughs> You're I'm a down queen. You're amazing. So <laughs> let's talk about Dolly for a second. All right, yeah. You did select a Dolly Parton song as one of your performances. And um, I know you have a new record player. Um, do you have any Dolly albums right now? Oh my gosh, no. So I, yeah, so it's funny that you mentioned this because I, uh, every Sunday I spend, you know, the morning uh, when I'm home in Columbus, I go record shopping with one of my best friends. We just like tool around and there's like four really great record stores here. And so um, I was shopping this past Sunday for my dad's birthday. He's turning 75 this year. Mm -hmm. So for my dad's birthday, I got him a Bluetooth record player. And so I was like, yeah, it's really cool. It's super, super cool. Got him a Bluetooth record player. I was like, this is going to give my dad the opportunity to pull out all these old records and kind of, you know, like go through like his music catalog with me. And, um, it, you know, it's really, really, I'm really excited about this. And so I go to my favorite record shop here in Columbus, it's called Spoonful. And um, I walk in and usually when I go in, I buy some kind of Dolly record, you know, one of the, cause she's got so many albums out. So many. You know, and they have a lot of used records and they're all in really good shape. And they go, oh my God, you're not gonna believe this. We just got in. Um, today we just got in this record store day release of Dolly Parton's The Grass is Blue, which is my favorite Dolly album. Yeah. It's a bluegrass album. It is so good. And, um, it, the, this was a record that was released in 2015. It's super rare. And I was like, I'm buying it. So that was like, so it's like, I'm literally staring at America player right now. It's like, literally it's right here. Have you played it yet? Have you, or is you just waiting to until I let you go? <laughs> no, I, I played it. It's the it's still in its it's like it wow. is wow. It is this it's a special edition. It's like so record store day happens like once a year in, in April. Wow. 
And um, so they re-released this album that is, I'm telling you, if you, it, it is so, so, so good. It is so good. This album her, is so, so good. Her bluegrass, though, is one of my, it's hauntingly good. Because I was obsessed with the, the album Little Sparrow. I love that album. Oh, oh my God. I love that I, album. I used to just play it because I used to do all my gigs by car when I was in my 20s. And I was just a bad, a bad girl back then. I would just drive around and smoke weed and be hung over <laughs> and drive the whole country in my early 20s just listening to to these there's a song on there um is it little sparrow and it's like it gets she goes from like meeting a man to like one step each verse gets worse and worse like like she falls in love and that kind of hurts and then he leaves her and that hurts and she has a baby and then like her baby oh, dies and then she dies and it ends with her like haunting the woods <laughs> like <laughs> So is that the banks of the, is that the banks of the Ohio? Do you know that one? That's like what is that a Johnny Cash song? But she oh. covered it on one of her albums, and it's like, like haunting. It's like oh, it's so sad. And, she loves a sad song, but with her voice, you're like, we well, can't be that sad. And you listen to the words, you're like, what the hell? This is. I have to look it up. Little Sparrow track list because the song Little Sparrow is like, oh my oh, god, it's the one where it's like, this is Mountain Angel. It's called Mountain Angel. That's what. Yeah. In my, oh my god, my. Angel. Oh. My Blue Tears is on that album, which is so good. Little Sparrow. I mean, this is such a good album. Heaven Let Your Light Shine Down, that cover of that, yeah, that cover. 90s song with the banjo. That's right. Down Ooh. from Dover. We could mm -hmm. talk about this. That's a really a great, great album. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so yeah, I spoiled myself with a, with a Dolly Grass is Blue album, which oh, I was congratulations. really- congratulations. I love that you're- Thanks, Kristen. I'm a nerd. I love it. That's what we do these days. I don't know if there is nerds anymore. I mean, in the eighties and nineties, like, well, you're, you're weird. You're out there. And now it's like, oh no, everything is celebrated now. We just celebrate yeah. everything. You're it's wonderful. True. It's true. It's true. So you're a Disney adult. Oh my um, gosh. Speaking of nerds, fun. nerd. No. <laughs> 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 but you are, you are a Disney adult. You're self-proclaimed. Yeah, I have to admit it. You know, I have to embrace it. It's it is part of my life, man. As is I it, sit from as I sit from my Little Mermaid mug. I was going to ask you if it's just the music or if it's the culture, but then as I look through your apartment, just piece by piece, I was I, like, oh, this goes deep. This goes real deep. I love your mug. <laughs> it's, you know, um, I am, I'm obsessed. These posters are from when I used to work in a movie theater in high school. I used to work in a movie theater. See, this is why we're friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's easy scheduling and you can just read. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly what it is. You can it's easy scheduling and you can read. Yeah, and free popcorn. <laughs> and free movies. Yeah, lots and, of free movies. And so uh, these are from when I was uh, when I was um, worked in a movie theater. Wow. In the mid 90s. Um, and so, you know, um, I think my love of Disney, like, I don't know really what it is. I've always loved it. You know, I grew up watching... You know, as a kid, the animated movies or watching the old Yeller or any of those Haley Mill movies, oh, like, those movies yeah. like Search of the Castaways or Parent Trap. Um, I just kind of grew up Nutty Professor, um, uh, Flubber, yeah. like the really old, like the originals from the 50s. Yeah. And Shaggy Dog. Loved. Shaggy yeah. Dog, Shaggy DA. Yeah. Yeah. Those were like all. Well, he got a promotion. <laughs> but it was, uh, yes, I've always loved it. I, I love the way it makes me feel. I think like for everybody else who loves it I think it's the nostalgia of it I think it's the what it reminds me of because you know I'll see something that rem will remind me of my grandma in some way right. or enough my or my dad taking me to the movies um, when my parents were separated and or like you know like it just on all these chapters of my life it's always kind of been there when I was st starting to come out with to myself and knowing who I was the movie Beauty and the Beast was out I was young mm -hmm. I was 12 or 13 and I remember I don't remember how old I was, but like, you know, I remember thinking about, you know, my own sexuality when that movie was coming out because Howard Ashman and Alan Mank, Howard Ashman specifically was an out gay man and what that meant. And, you know, just all these chapters of my life. And so Disney is like, yeah, I, you know, this phone was actually in my grandma's kitchen. Oh. When, you know, when I, so she, like, I grew up in a Disney family, right? So the phone was in my grandma's kitchen and I, and I got it when she passed and, you know, like, yeah, it's always kind of been there for me. I love the music. Do you, uh, so what's your, like, what would be your go-to Disney song to sing at a karaoke? If it's, if it specifically uh, has to be a Disney karaoke, where are you going first? I'm going Co-Unfortunate Souls, Ursula, honey. 
honey mm. that or I'm gonna do like uh <laughs> like out there hunchback give me give me a monster a monstrous wow like <laughs> either a hunchback or a lady with eight eight tentacles <laughs> oh ursula what a good call good call. what would you do um, oh, I like part of your world. Um, I like how far I'll go. I like anything that it's the uh, woman, the woman longing to get out there, especially if it's just like, I'm just horny for water, whatever it is. <laughs> Something and that's about, that's about right. Always. It's always a woman just like, I just need more moisture. And <laughs> as a dry skinned lady, I just feel like Moana and the little mermaid got me. <laughs> I, I too am a dry skin lady. This <laughs> is the worst. <laughs> I've been staring at my bottle of Lubriderm. <laughs> I just love it. No, any Disney like oh. lady that just is like just longing for something else. Because I grew up in a church family as a gay lady, and just like the idea of, um, you know, something else being beyond that horizon or whatever that super calls to me. Um, yeah. I, I do love how far I'll go. I love, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, there's that. I also really love that element that you kind of, you, you mentioned because like, it's the, that, that like, no, like what I love about the, what I love about the Disney movie, the Disney trope is that, you know, like it is this idea of hoping or dreaming or uh, somewhere, some way. And I think a lot of queer people can, this resonates with them. Like, there's another, there's another life waiting for me. Like there's something else there that I get to, I get to have that it right. isn't this misery that I'm in right yeah. now. Yeah. There's a place, there's a place where I belong. I think. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thankfully, like, like as a grown up 40 year old lady, it's like, oh, okay. That's like California or, you know, a place where like, lesbian, <laughs> where lesbians live. My <laughs> wife wrote, uh, what is a thread the other day? And it just said, I hate it when there's no other gay people. And I was like, that should be on a t-shirt because I hate it when I'm somewhere and I'm the only gay person. Yes. And I just love it when there's tons of gay people. So now I'm just trying to make it to where, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to be the only gay person anymore, ever. No, there's no need to be. You know, yeah. like, you know, I, I, t I totally love that because the, uh, the idea of like, right when you're growing up and you feel like you are the only one, like that's like the fucking worst. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, not only it's like, I'm the only one and I'm wrong. And everybody else is yeah. right, and I am wrong, and I'm I should apologize. Hmm. But I'm gonna yeah. I'm also still gay. Um, like when you mentioned like being 12, 13 and watching Beauty and the Beast, it is interesting that when puberty hits for gay kids, it's just what an interesting time to just be discovering all kinds of new things about my body, but also to be uh 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 oh. Like I do have all these new feelings and they are not right. Yeah, yeah, but, and and I can't tell anybody. Right. <laughs> You're like, like yeah. I have tingles and feelings and sweats and it is and not for him. It is <laughs> for this weird acne covered lady over here. <laughs> My story's a little different. It was for him. Oh, okay. Okay. That makes sense. <laughs> and still you were wrong, but we both were both no. wrong still. No, we were wrong. <laughs> we found out <laughs> uh, did you ever go to church camp or were you a different i was a church oh, camp kid. i did go to church camp i went to like like we went to church camp went to church church lock-ins i was very actively involved in my like church youth group oh yeah what a weird time to be gay and in puberty and also like falling in love with jesus like or like whatever it's just like oh i have all these feelings for church but i'm also having all these feelings for that girl that we hold hands and sing songs with. Oh, yeah, God, the worst. God bless you. God bless you. The worst time. That was like the worst period of time because you couldn't, there's no right answer, right? And no you right could, answer. No, you had no access to any kind of answer. I mean, I'm 45. So I grew up relatively in the, the same time period that you did, yeah. a little older. But like, you know, Two we didn't years. have. I'm 43. Yeah, we're the same. Well, you were the same. We like, could have gone to bonfire together and been fine. <laughs> we would have just <laughs> held each other's hands nicely and been like this. I've been like been a nice cover. <laughs> and I borrow your button ups. You can borrow <laughs> anything in my closet. Let's just done trade. And done. Yeah, oh. it was. Yeah, you know, you 
we didn't have access to like a phone that had even any kind of resource or, or a computer or a YouTube channel that offered community or sense of belonging. It was just different. And, yeah. you know, I think the struggle is still obviously clearly very hard and it's very difficult for kids. And, um, you know, as we see by awful, awful things in the news, but, you know, like, yeah, it felt isolating when we were growing up. Yeah, I think it's why visibility is so like it's so important. Uh, you know, now that we've kind of found found our path, that like I don't know, I think it's important to see out people. I think like uh, um, we're gonna go to Taylor Swift for a moment because I know you're a, you're a Taylor Swift fan. But just the line, uh, "Shame never made anyone less, less gay." I'm like, gay. yes, just putting Sorry, that in a shame song. Shame never made anybody less gay. Yeah. Yes, yes, putting that in a song lyric that's so widely accepted as like everybody loves taylor swift this is you know it's a great song it's a banger and then having that slip just trojan horse in there as a young gay kid how wonderful to just hear that and go whoa whoa mm -hmm. hey that's mine that was mine that's my little nugget to say even taylor swift has you you know mother's yeah. got you <laughs> the t swizzle's got yeah she loves them <laughs> yeah. she's an ally the, the swizzle sticks is an ally yeah there's i think it's so powerful that the most powerful person in the industry right now who is Taylor Swift has used her platform, I think, in really um, powerful, you know, powerful ways to let to let people know where she stands without having to be like, you know, she's very, she's very, very, you know, like precise in how she uses her platform. And I think, you know, that's, a, she's just a boss and like, you know, like Beyonce, you know, like Taylor, yeah. like Oprah, like all these wonderful, powerful women. I think she does it with such grace and such ease. And I think, you know, men hate her because she's she's able to reach a whole, she's able to change the world, you know? Yeah. I mean, she, yeah. she's changing the world, literally changing how we how we consume music, mm -hmm. literally changing how, who owns, you know, who has the right to own their own music, who has the right to use their voice and speak up for people. I just think she is... I love her. Yeah, I think she's such a a great role. I have a niece, you know, who's uh, in high school, who's young, and I'm just like, I'm so thrilled that my niece has somebody to look up to. That is a woman who is powerful, who stands in her truth and in her own skin, and uses all of her story as her power. Like her, all of her, every ounce of her is is powerful, and I think that's so incredible for my niece to be able to look up to and say, yeah, I can be. I can be anything I want to be. Yeah. I don't know. So you're, we're about the same age. We both seem to be old, old ladies at heart. Uh, there was something <laughs> that you put in my, in the pre-show interview. I always ask a few questions just, you know, and there was one that jumped off the page to me because it's something we have in common. I did not think we did. And we just need to talk. We need to talk about Jessica Fletcher and Angela Lansbury and Cabot Cove and all the shenanigans that go on there. And why was murder? She wrote on the list of things that you enjoy. Oh my God. Are you okay? I mean, like, I feel like I've got a story for everything that I put on my sheet, but murder. She wrote, I would go to my grandma's and grandpa's on Sunday, Sundays is where I got this phone. And when I was growing up and I would help them, you know, I'd mow their yard. I would do like, I would, you know, in the summer I'd plant their flowers or take care of their Good grass. Boy. I mean, whatever. Like I was, I was that, I was that grandkid. So I was the one who was helping out around the house and I'd stay for Sunday dinner. And then my grandpa would always do burgers on the grill and we'd watch Murder, She Wrote every Sunday night. So it had, so like, here's this like, whatever, 11 year old, 10 year old boy. It's just like, Ooh, Jessica Fletcher's calling this crime. And you know, Cabot Cove, whoa, whoa where's Cabot Cove? Who cares? <laughs> yeah. It's like, whatever. I was totally not interested. And then um, I, but I had watched many episodes over the, that time period of my life. And then she came back to me. I'm a, I'm a gigantic Angela fan. I, I think she, one of, I just love her. I love Angela Lansbury. Uh, I grew up loving Angela Lansbury. And then uh, during the pandemic, one of my choices was to binge all like 14 seasons of Murder, She Wrote. I went back and I rewatched it all and I reconnected to it. And how can you not love J.B. Fletcher? You know, just simply hanging out in her garden going, well, I guess I better check that out, Sheriff Metzger. <laughs> you know, like, or she shows up on the scene and she's like, well, it looks to me like that that bottle wasn't sitting over there and there's poison in the in the hidden behind the whatever. I mean, like, it's 
so fun, it's so camp, and it's so comforting. There's something about it to me yeah. that's so comforting. We like to, like, we loved it when she, we love that she jogs. We're like, she just jogs. And then she goes okay. everywhere in a hurry. She's always in a very a brisk. She brisks and the bike, the bike is, uh, so it's the bike, the jogging, the briskness in every episode. Yeah, she's, <laughs> I think she's off, paint, right? she paints her house at one point, you know, mm -hmm. she, she goes to New York city for a little bit. She's in Boston. I mean, she's definitely an East coaster, which I really appreciate. She goes How on a nieces cruise. and nephews does she have? She's always oh my, visiting a niece or a nephew. The one nephew is like it's Brady is constantly causing a problem. <laughs> it's always like, yeah, and Jess, I've got a girlfriend, and it happened to me, she's a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. I can't believe you're the murderer. I mean, he's yeah. got a she's got like a girlfriend for a while. I mean, whatever. Not that we need to go through the <laughs> the history of murder she wrote but i love it why do you so many it? places i just i love her and i love that she's just, again it's a woman that don't need no man and she's right the water um i'm sure she moisturizes i don't know why i have this thing with dry skin <laughs> have you seen the angela lansbury the the videos of her moisturizing i have <laughs> she's like and like like it's yeah she's like oh, i like to moisturize but I mean, the, you mentioned this is how she stayed right. looking so good so long, or she's looked old forever. I can't tell because when I was a kid, Bed, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks was one of my favorite movies, and I'm like, oh, she's like an old lady. She was like 36 in that, and so she's either looked old f just forever, or she's always looked gracefully ageless. I think I think it's kind of a combination of both because our mind's eye as kids are probably like that person's older than me and that's what old looks like and then you grow up and they haven't changed at all so they're like I guess old is that right. <laughs> yeah you know what I mean like you don't have any way to process what your mind's eye as a kid says old is because I thought sure, Wilfred yeah. Brimley let's say like he's always looked old yeah he's like he's been like I'm I'm Wilfred Brimley Oh, uh, diabetes, but he's always looked old. <laughs> like, yeah, but 30 years no... earlier in Cocoon, same, same. Yes. There's yeah. no difference. That, that's a good shout out for the people who know what Cocoon is. That's us, for sure. It's for old people, it's people like almost are like in 10 years, we could be in Cocoon. It's like, what happened to old people? <laughs> it's time for five quick questions. Oh my God, I want to have you on every week. I want to, I want to, but this is a podcast in three parts. I'm going to move it along. Uh, we okay. chit chatted for a while. We got to play five quick questions and do a Mad Lib before I can release you back into the world. Get ready. Five quick questions with okay. us. You're on death row. What's your last meal? Death row last meal. Oh gosh. I'm going to say grilled cheese sandwich. That might be really simple. Is that crazy? No, that's so comforting. When you when you want a grilled cheese sandwich, tell me what you picture in your head. What kind of bread? What kind of cheese? I picture like a like a like a like a spongy white bread, spongy enough so that when it's griddled like on a flat like on a flat top, it gets really crunchy. Yeah. You know, like it's got a texture to it. It's it gets like a it has a texture yeah. to it. The cheesy gets the cheese gets really cheesy. Maybe like a little tomato soup and maybe some French fries just to, you know, curb, you know, curb any carb cravings. I, I'm not kidding with the grilled cheese. <laughs> and it's the last meal. So you don't have to worry about constipation at all. You're like, well, I'm never pooping again anyway, because I'm, I'm just dying. all over this chair. <laughs> I can me. have as much cheese as I want. <laughs> Excellent answer. Uh, question number two, question number two, finish this sentence. Call me petty, but I would dump someone just for. Taylor Swift ticket. Call me petty, but I would, oh wait, oh call me petty, but I would dump someone just for like they do something to me. No, no, it's way better when someone's bribing you with Taylor Swift tickets to dump somebody. No, you it break wrong. up with your boyfriend for these tickets? Fuck yeah, I will. Oh, yeah, I'll break up with them. Wait, hold on, wait. Call me petty, but I would break up with. Okay, wait. Ask me again. Ask me again. Finish ask this me. sentence. Although I'm just gonna keep your final answer as the first one. Finish the sentence. Call me petty, but I would dump someone just for. Chronic halitosis. Oh, bad breath. Yeah. Okay. I hate okay. it. Okay. I hate it. it that Fair. is all, that's like a big, I'm smell sensitive. Okay. Um, okay. Number three, question number three, five quick questions. Uh, what is your favorite song to sing naked? Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, don't bring me down. ELL, Electric Light Orchestra. Don't bring me down. Don't bring me down. <laughs> <laughs> you just flap around. 
bring me down. It could also be about a boner. I mean, I don't know. Okay, okay. Excellent. No, I don't know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm taking it. These are very serious. They're going on your record. Question number four. What? Weapon, weapon of choice. Oh, there's no, uh, you don't give me a choice. I pick, I pick a weapon. Yep. Wit. Ooh, okay. Well, someone with a chainsaw is going to murder you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to let them know about themselves before they do. Before <laughs> they take feel... my arm, I'm going to be like, oh, did someone have a rough childhood? What was it? <laughs> no, I feel so insecure right now. <laughs> question number five, question number five. What is the correct amount of cats the limit does not exist Ooh, what a great answer and what a great great uh mean girls quote mm. yeah you know i mean look it can there ever be too many cats i mean yeah, yeah. what a brilliant but answer who am i to say who am i to say mm. i'm just <laughs> falling i'm just falling deeper and deeper in love with you with every sentence that comes out of your beautiful mouth <laughs> mm. And now it's time for Rad Libs. All right, you've chit-chatted with me. You've played my five quick questions. It's my favorite part of every episode. I've written a Mad Lib specifically okay. for you. It's okay. a story where I left out some parts of speech. You're going to give me the missing parts of speech. Together, we're going to make this great story. Are you ready to play? I'm so ready. I'm so ready. Verb ending in ing. Jumping. Yep. A local business. Local business in my hometown? I mean, that I would have, be- I have no more information for you. A local business. Uh, Jenny's Ice Cream. It's from Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> and you're coming here on tour. You're home of Jenny's Ice Cream? Yes. It's, yes. I fucking love. What's your favorite? I Mine's Peaches and Biscuits. What do you- Oh, it's what? so good. Peaches and Biscuits, really good. Um, Brambleberry Crisp. Brambleberry um, Crisp. I mean, I, I just went last night and they have a jelly donut and a fluffernutter. And if you put it together, it tastes like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It is- this is so a real good. place I can go to when I go to Columbus. Oh, there are I'm stores going. all over. There are there are stores all over. There's stores in Los Angeles, by the way. I'm gonna oh. tell you, there are stores in LA on Larchmont and look at me like I work at Jenny's. Can I meet Jenny? Can I say hi? Thank He's you. Here so in much Columbus. For to the I can probably make I that happen. I would love that. I would love that. I would love to. She's see wonderful. That. No, she's lovely. Jenny, if you're watching, I just I just think your ice cream is so good. I just when I'm <laughs> lactose intolerant, and there have been multiple times where I've been like, I don't even care anymore. I don't care. They have non they, but they have non dairy flavors. I don't Texas care. Cake is non dairy. <laughs> Coffee with cream is non dairy. Look at you. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> so good. It's so good. Okay. 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 A candy. I need a candy. Kit Kat. Uh, a word starting with P. Philanthropy. Philanthropy. Okay. Okay. I need a song. How about uh, uh, you need a song? Let's Title. do a Taylor and okay. let's do you need to calm down. Yep. Oh, uh, noun, um, a stinky dog, uh, a musical artist, they might be giants. <laughs> what the hell? I don't know what did they sing? I'm trying to remember. They, they might be giants sang. Um, what they sing? They sang so Particle nice. Man, Particle, particle Man. man. Doing the thing. And things that a particle can. Like, this is from the 90s. Particle man. I'm like, have you watched the beef? Have you watched beef? The oh, show? I've heard all. Uh, yeah, I've heard, but I haven't seen it. Haven't seen it, it is so good. And this, every song, the people must be our age because every song used is from the 90s. It's like uh, every single song. I'm Find a reason to be. I mean, every single song. It's like a Tori Amos song. You have to watch beef because it's basically it a celebration list. of not only road rage but our like our our, our growing up. <laughs> anyway, sorry. What don't we love more than road rage in '90s music? <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, adjective. Adjective. How about um, cheeky? Ooh, great British word. Food. A food. Twinkie. Yeah. <laughs> Great placement on that one. Uh, another body part? Um, elbow. Yep. Uh, profession or occupation? Taxidermist. Oh, God. We didn't know that about them. <laughs> Story, <laughs> story's really shaping up. Uh, bup, 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 bup. Uh, uh, question. A question. Any question? How... 
How many licks to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop? Uh, an adjective? Slimy. Oh, that's right. That, that's exactly what goes there. A liquid? Um, goat's milk. Yep. A verb ending in ing? Sweating. Yep. <laughs> uh, a body part? Nose. We have a story, my friend. We have written oh a story. Oh my God. You I'm did it. You can't did get it. ready. Okay. Murder, she wrote. The case of the missing drag queen. No, it's so good. I'm oh so my gosh. Everybody in town was jumping with excitement the day after the annual Cabot Cove drag show. Every seat in that little Massachusetts Ginny's ice cream had been filled with cheering townsfolk who had come to see their favorite local drag queens, Kit Kat and Pinky Philanthropy. <laughs> I think those both work. It's really good. I'm changing my drag name to <laughs> Pinky Philanthropy. <laughs> You are, I dub thee Pinky Philanthropy. Oh, well, thank you, mother. <laughs> Kit Kat had performed a rendition of You Need to Calm Down wearing a sequined underwear, but the showstopper came when Pinky Philanthropy was lowered onto the stage via crane, riding a stinky dog and singing They Might Be Giants. <laughs> the night had been cheeky. However, by morning, word had spread that visiting drag queen Lady Twinkie had gone missing. <laughs> the police couldn't make heads or elbows of it, so as usual, they called on Jessica Fletcher, a local author and amateur taxidermist. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> I don't know what goes on in her basement. I, I mean, that woman was doing everything. She could do it all. Jessica began her investigation by questioning the other drag queens, asking the usual question, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a tootsie roll? She then gathered clues from backstage at the show, a boa, uh, and a pair of slimy tights soaked with goat's milk. Well, <laughs> after that, she'd seen enough. She jogged to the police station to see Sheriff Amos Tupper. Did you find the missing drag queen? Asked Amos. Not missing, yeah, just a costume change. Today, I believe she's wearing a police uniform, right, Amos? What? Amos blushed and they both burst out sweating. What gave me away? Asked Amos. Jessica replied, your nose was showing. <laughs> Amos Tupper is a queen. I knew it. I knew it. Can you just picture it? He's so, Tupper. so good. Sheriff Tupper. Oh, Tupper. Amos Tupper. <laughs> well, I'm a splatter. Oh, you're fabulous. What do you have coming up that you'd like to tell the listeners about? I'm excited. I'm going to be traveling around, doing some touring, hitting some spots. So make sure, you know, everyone just checks out my website, ninawest.com for more information. But until then, you know, follow me on the socials. And um, of course, go see Kristen on tour all spring and summer, right? Because don't plug me. You just plug be, you. No, so it's sweet. true. It's, you're going to be all over and you put on one hell of a show. And if, what I think we all need now, right now, is laughter. And I think you give such a healthy dose of it. So. Oh. I want you to go see you live if they have I'd you. I'd love to get to see people. Like I get like bumping into people like you. Hopefully we can work together again. I think I would love that. that. It would be so fun if we could ever someday manifest it, put it out in the universe. Someday we could do a show with the both of us on it. I'm I'm putting it together right now in my head. Okay, it's gonna it's just like Amos Tupper and Drag. I can picture it and it's beautiful. My nose is showing. <laughs> <laughs> You're fabulous. Thank you so much You're for fabulous. coming Thank on. You. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Interview complete. I think my drag name would be Computer Lady. Wow, we learned something new about Computer Lady every episode. Thank you so much, Nina West, for coming on. I just love you and your face and everything about you. Um, and you for listening. Uh, thank you so much for taking in this podcast and for being being a part of the show. Please leave a comment, uh, review us, let, let us know who you want to see on the Kristen Knows Blank podcast. And go to my website. It's kristenkey.com. It's got my tour dates on there. Um, I've got a lot of fun stuff. You can also join the Lesbian Army of the, my, via my Patreon, where you can get an exclusive VIP newsletter there's some uh some tiers that have merch there's some that don't there's just a general support which is, is generally supportive and if you're not already following me on social media go ahead you know what's the harm it's gonna be it's fun to post lots of videos it'll be a really good time uh in the future i will continue to bring you amazing guests they're so good this season uh so until next time uh, bye we're gonna talk to some people gonna have a lot of fun we're gonna talk to Hello. some people gonna learn a lot of stuff we're gonna talk to some Hello. people gonna have a lot of fun we're gonna talk to some Hello. people gonna learn a lot of stuff because it's